to get started, what first motivated you to get into BJJ? That's a great question. So I started Jiu-Jitsu when I was 14 years old. And I was on that age that all my friends were coming to my house and we were playing video game. And then after we would grapple on the carpet. So, and I was not winning the, 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 the grappling. So I, wanted, I always wanted to find something to boost my self-confidence, to make sure that I can believe more in myself, and also to learn self-defense skills. So there was one of, I have two brothers older than me, and one of them, who is three years older than me, he had a friend that when he would do this grappling with the, their friends on the carpet, he would beat everybody, and he was very small, very small and skinny. So that called my attention. I was like, what is he doing? And he was a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. So he was the one who introduced me to jiu-jitsu. But I think the bottom line is like, I wanted to find something that I could boost my self-confidence and learn self-defense skills. What are the benefits of practicing BJJ and why should people consider starting with it? Yeah, so I truly believe that uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the best sport in the world regarding mental benefits. And the reason why is when you do jiu-jitsu, you really develop like mental toughness, because jiu-jitsu is a type of sport that you learn how to feel comfortable, comfortable in the discomfort. So you're constantly put in positions that it's very uncomfortable and you got to feel comfortable over there in order to figure out how to escape and how to make progress over there. So it teaches a lot about mental toughness, teaches a lot about mental clarity. Jiu-jitsu is a type of sport different than running, for example, that when you're doing jiu-jitsu, you don't think about anything else. Your mind is completely clear and you're just focused on grappling with your partner over there. So you're not thinking about your problems, you're not thinking about your life, you're not thinking about anything. You're just focused on that. And you also develop a lot of confidence, you develop discipline. So I think I'm a huge advocate that jiu-jitsu can be one of the best tools on anybody's life. So I think those are the main benefits. And, and besides that, you're gonna get healthy, you're gonna get in a good shape, you're gonna get in a good spirit. So I truly believe that jiu-jitsu is a great tool for any person. What advice would you give to someone who has just started with BJJ? That's a very simple one, don't quit. <laughs> and the, the reason I say don't quit is because if you ever think about quitting jiu-jitsu, give it a second chance. And in my opinion, the way you, you should give a second chance is by go find another school. There is a chance that you start in a bad school that has no curriculum, that uh, it's not very clean, that the instructor is not very friendly, and that's why you didn't like jiu-jitsu. But jiu-jitsu, it is an amazing thing, and if you're training in the right place, it should be very enjoyable, and it should be a great thing to your life. And I truly believe that jiu-jitsu teaches us a lot about resilience, and resilience, in my opinion, is one of the most important skills in life. And I would start with that. So if you don't quit jiu-jitsu, because if you don't quit and you keep going, it's gonna be a great tool for your life. So my advice for who is starting jiu-jitsu is not an easy thing. It's hard, you're grappling for other people on the mat, wearing a gi. As some people do know gi as well, but wearing gi, you're gonna feel like warm. And the, it's almost like playing chess in the beginning. Like there's a lot of options, it gets a little complex. But if you don't quit and you keep going, there is no reason for you to not become a black belt one day. So that's my advice. Don't quit. Give your jiu-jitsu a second chance if you're thinking about quitting. What was your motivation behind founding BJJ Fanatics and what do you hope to achieve through it? First, I'm going to talk about the motivation. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the story. But the main motivation was like, how can we bring the very best instructors and fighters in the world to everybody's home? And the only way to do that was through the internet. Like, how can we bring like John Danaher, Gordon Ryan, Marcelo Garcia to your home? Like, uh, those are the biggest names in Jiu-Jitsu kind of. So how can you bring them to your home? That was the internet, there was no other path for that. And that's exactly what BJJ Fanatics does. But if you go back a little bit in the story of BJJ Fanatics, the way it started was my business partner, Michael Zenga, he, he was very interested to learn the game that I play which is called half guard and over underpass in jiu-jitsu. So he reached out to me uh, to learn the, the, these two techniques in jiu-jitsu. And I lived in New York City and he lived in Boston. So he reached out to me. I traveled from Boston to New York City to teach him, to teach that move. And we were lucky that we kind of like lived nearby. 
But we were just thinking, like, man, imagine if I was living in Brazil and you're living here. You would probably never lose, never learn the, the move the way you learned it because I was able to teach you. So how can we break that? How can we short this distance? And then the idea came up, you know, like, so wait a second, why don't you create a website where we film with the very best instructors and athletes and fighters in the world and the customers have access to that content? And that's BGJ Fanatics, you know, like, and the, I think this is a, could apply for any subject because, for example, if you were learning about investments, how can you learn from Warren Buffett? You know, like, uh, is there a class for that? You know, like, so, so that was exactly the idea of BGJ Fanatics. It was like, how can you bring the very best instructors in the planet to the customers? And doing that, we truly believe that we are growing the sport. And overall, on top of that, I'm a big believer that if there were more people, more people in the world doing jiu-jitsu, we would have a better world. Because I think jiu-jitsu is such a great tool to everybody's life, especially for the mental aspects. And uh, I think would be a lot less like mental health issues. And, uh, and I think people would, would be a lot more people with resilience, a lot more people who can deal with adversities in the best way, a lot more people who can overcome obstacles. So I think those are the main benefits of jiu-jitsu. And I believe that with BGJ Fanatics, we can reach more people through jiu-jitsu and grow the sport and help the world. You provide instructional videos on your YouTube channel and BJJ Fanatics and you teach students yourself. What is important when it comes to teaching BJJ? Yeah, one thing I learned is that teaching is an art. You know, like teaching is just not teaching. It's, it's, it, it's a whole thing. It's an art. And one thing we learned through BJJ Fanatics and through the YouTube channel that's very interesting is that many times the best instructor is not or was not the best athlete and vice versa. So the best athlete, maybe it's not going to be the best instructor. So I think the very best instructors are the ones who can articulate concepts on an easy and digestible way for the students. And when I mean concepts, it's because I think everybody can teach a technique. I can grab your arm here, grab your shoulder there and, and teach this technique. But the one who can articulate the concepts behind this technique is the one who is going to be the best instructor. So that is the main thing that we learned through the BGG Fanatics and through the YouTube channel. It's like, who are the instructors who can teach the concepts behind each move the best? And many times it's not the best athlete and there is no correlation between like being a great athlete and being a great instructor, you know, like so. So this was very interesting and I think that's the idea, like who can teach the best concepts about each move on a very easy and digestible way for the students. As a five-time world champion, how do you prepare for high-level competitions? Yeah, so that's a great question. And uh, basically from 2001 to 2017, so when I was 14 years old until when I was 30 years old, my whole life was about competing. You know, like this was, this was the main thing in my life. And then I think I developed some sort of mindset where there are only two things in life that I really care about, you know, like, and the first one is people, which is like my family, my friends, the people I work with, the, my students, society, so people. And the second one is winning. So <laughs> I care about winning. And when I mean, when I talk about winning, I'm talking about like doing my best every day. You know, like I think if I'm doing my very best every day, on everything that I'm, that I'm committed to do, I'm winning. And, and so there, in my mind, I grew up competing with that mindset. You know, I care about people and I care about winning. And it's important to talk about that because when I was competing, my whole life was focused around this. You know, like How can I do my best every day in the training, with my diet, with my rest, with my, there are things beside the training, with my drilling, with my techniques, with my studying, uh, with, with wrestling, with judo, because it goes together with jiu-jitsu, right? So th this was pretty much my preparation, was like putting my whole life towards that goal and saying no to anything that doesn't go around this goal. So uh, I believe that jiu-jitsu, there is no right recipe. Like you have to create your own. There's no formula. And each person finds his own formula. But I always started 
my research for my own formula with this in mind, you know, like this is my main goal in life. I want to win. I want to win the tournament. And I'm going to say no to everything that doesn't go together with these goals. So, and nowadays I'm not competing anymore, but I really try to keep this mindset where I care about people and I care about doing my best every day. Those are the two main things in my life, you know, like on everything I do, uh, and doing my best every day, I'm talking about like doing my best with my family, doing my best with my work, doing my best with my routine, doing my best with my body and things like that. So I think that was the mindset to win five world titles. And nowadays I try to apply this mindset for everything I do in life as well. And I think anyone who has this mindset can succeed on something because when you focus when you laser focus your whole life to something uh, i love the quote that shoot for the moon and even if you miss you're going to be long around the stars so this is this was my quote i was like i'm going to shoot for the moon and if things go wrong i'm going to at least become a star in your opinion what are the most important techniques to master that's a great question and I think it depends on the journey, it depends where you are in the journey. You know, like, but for example, for someone who's just starting Jiu-Jitsu, I would say that the most important thing is not even to focus on techniques to master and more on concepts. So like concepts about escaping, like you're in a bad position, how do you escape from these bad positions? What should you do? How should be your posture? Concepts about submissions, understanding the most important submissions. So I think the, it's almost like you don't want to focus on techniques, you want to focus on understanding jiu-jitsu. I think that's the beginning. Then at some point, I think you're going to start building some roadmap, some game plan for yourself. And then you're going to try to identify what, which are the techniques that you feel you have the most talent for, and you're going to focus on those techniques. And that resonates a lot with life to me, because jiu-jitsu, you literally have like hundreds or maybe even thousands of techniques. And you cannot be good on all of them. You, you, you can know a lot of them, but be really good on all of them is going to be really hard. So at some point, you're going to need to grab some of those techniques and really try to master them and become better on those techniques than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So when I was competing, for example, I pretty much had like three, four or five moves that were my go moves. And on those moves, I was the best one in the world. I knew those moves better than anybody else. So I would start every match and try to bring my opponent to my game plan as soon as I could. I love that quote from Bruce Lee, which he says that, uh, I don't fear the guy who knows 1,000 techniques. I fear the person who knows one technique and has practiced 1,000 times. So that was one of my favorite quotes. And I fully agree with that because if you really master two, three, four, or five techniques, and you know those moves better than any person in the planet, now you have a huge advantage. And I think that's how life is. You know? like if you become a doctor, you're gonna need to make a decision. If you become a brain doctor or knee doctor, shoulder doctor, if you're the overall doctor, you're not gonna be the best doctor. And I think Jiu Jitsu is pretty much the same thing. You know? like you're gonna need to pick a few moves and try to become the best person in the planet on those moves. So, it's hard to answer like one yeah. technique, but I think understanding this concept is very helpful. How has BJJ evolved over the years and where do you see it going? So it's just amazing to see what's going on in Jiu Jitsu right now, because I would guess that it might be already the fastest growing sport in the world. And you see like now there are all these celebrities doing Jiu Jitsu, very intelligent people like Mark Zuckerberg, Joe yeah. Rogan, Tim Ferriss, uh, and many others, Jock Winnings, and many others doing Jiu-Jitsu. And I think the reason why is because everybody is understanding all the benefits that Jiu-Jitsu brings to life. And I think it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And you see, like, even like in, in places like in the Abu Dhabi, for example, the whole sheiks and the whole family is understanding that Jiu-Jitsu is one of the best sports and putting on all schools. Then here in the U.S. you have all the celebrities doing then it's growing in Europe, it's growing in Brazil, it's growing in Africa, it's, gr it's literally growing everywhere. So I think it's just going to keep growing. It's a great product. And it's the only combat sport that you can do when you're getting old. So I think <laughs> that differentiates Jiu-Jitsu a lot from all the other martial arts. Mm -hmm. 
Because if you do boxing or wrestling or judo and you're 50 years old, you don't want to get punched in the <laughs> face. You don't want to deal with a lot of takedowns if you are 50 years old. But jiu-jitsu is well known as the gentle art or human chess or whatever you want to call. And I think it's a great product even if you are in this age, you're like if you're 40, 50, 60. And I know that because we own BGG Fanatics, I'm the co-founder. And we see that the audience is over 30, over 40, over 50. So I literally think that it's going to keep growing, growing and growing. And even if you analyze the technique aspect of jiu-jitsu, if you watch a jiu-jitsu match 30 years ago and compare it to nowadays, jiu-jitsu nowadays is way more sophisticated than 30 years ago. So it's growing in the number of practitioners and population, but it's also growing a lot in the aspects of like the techniques and the moves that jiu-jitsu has. So I hope I live for the next 50 to 100 years to watch this explosion of jiu-jitsu around the world. And again, as I said here earlier, I truly believe that if more people do jiu-jitsu, we have a better world. Just because yeah. jiu-jitsu is such a great thing for everybody's lives and especially everybody's mental health. Mm.